I felt like I deserved something, honestly. It makes me sweat, it makes me feel on edge and anxious because I'm all sweat and can't breathe. A lot of people ask me, Claire, what does vegan leather mean? And I say to them, you're going to be shocked, but hear me out when I talk about it. Another one of my best purchases for 2020. <laughs> Did, why do adults keep saying that? You're sorry. Hello everyone. Welcome to another video. So, um, I'm filming so many videos in a row today that bear with me. I feel like I'm going to regret filming so many, but I've just been so busy and I really wanted to make sure I didn't miss any videos. Oh, I've just filmed a video so uncomfortable and I have just should have just lowered the thing. So I am filming today a video all about best and worst things that I bought in 2020. So I've never done one of these videos before. Uh, I never ever watched one either. I'm sure that mine's gonna look like everybody else's but normally when I honestly don't watch another one, mine tend to be a bit different but I think this kind of is what it is, like best and worst. The only thing that I do want to show you, it's not going to be a trick either, it's not going to be like, well, I don't know, there's no trickery in any of my videos, I'm just going to be honest. Um, what I hope that you can get from this video, just out of curiosity, seeing what I liked and didn't like, but also maybe buying process of when you buy things, so hopefully it should help. Even if you're not looking for the exact same brands, hopefully it helps in that sense. So, um, shall we get started with the, the, the what we did buy? So, what I wanted to like. There's quite a few actually, that's why I wanted to do this video. So the first thing I'm going to talk about are the sentimental pieces that I have because that for me were my favourite things. When I spoke about and thought about what are my favourite things, it was definitely the sentimental pieces because they're things that, you know, like for example, my Cartier clue bracelet, I got that in 2020 and I know push presents are so controversial and I get it, I really do. It doesn't mean your husband loves you more or anything like that. And I wasn't particularly that bothered, but after what it takes to grow and get a child out, <laughs> I felt like I deserved something, honestly. And I know, I, I totally see what you're saying when you say, like, they're ridiculous and my husband didn't buy me that one. It's fine, I get it. Just It just worked for us and this just makes me think, ha, huh, yeah, it was worth doing all that. So I really love this. A Cartier Clue is very generic. A lot of people have them, uh, but it doesn't bother me when I love something that much and I have been wearing it every day and I really do love, love it. Um, the quality of this bangle for the price, yes, it's not worth the money in that sense, but I like it. So I'm really happy that I finally got one and it represents something. Normally when I buy jewelry, it is to represent something. Um, I would love to talk about this Morse code bracelet I have, but I did talk about it in my last one, but I've been wearing it every day and I genuinely love it. But it's a 21, but, um, it was a gift, but it's 2021. Um, my Kelly A, Kelly A, my Kelly Celia was one of my favorite things of 2020 because again, it's very sentimental. I'd wanted a Kelly 25 for a long time and it didn't disappoint. I won't get into how much, you know, I love this bag and blah, blah, blah. This is not an Hermes video. There is an unboxing. I literally my given birth a week before, so I was probably all over the place. Um, but it's everything I ever wanted. I love the 25. I love the colour. It's my favourite colour. I had a little boy, so it was just perfect. And I do not need a bag to remind me of my son and make me think of him. Of course not. You know me. I, that's not true. Um, but it, I do look at this out of all of my bags and it straight away brings me back to the time of when I did the unboxing and he was like two weeks old and it brings me a lot of memories, this, this bag. So I do love that one. Whilst we're talking about um, Hermes and Kelly's and everything, this was actually one of my favourite things that I got in 2020. Um, and the reason is, is because I, I did always want one, but they're quite expensive um, and I'd gone back to using a small coin purse and I love using a small change purse. Um, they are so convenient with all the small bags and I just, in the end I thought right now's the time when I'm going to get one of these but I probably won't use it that much. I'm actually using it all the time and I love it. I had a lot of questions of people saying isn't it annoying. When I put it in my bag I literally have it like that. Um, you can put these away a lot nicer, you can pop them in like that. So I use it like that, and it's no trouble at all, like I don't even have to look at it. 
And then when you do want it super secure, and I even leave it like that sometimes, when you do want it super secure, you can have the beautiful Kelly fastening like this. And I absolutely love it. And I think I'm going to love this even more when I do go traveling and I can finally go on holiday again because I love the wallet on the chain to, to um, put my passport and everything in it. So this fits an iPhone, the big one or a big phone, and it fits your passport at the same time. So I know I'm going to love this even more. And I do, I forgot how much I love a big wallet. And I used to always, always have a big wallet. Um, and I, because I, with the whole COVID and everything, I have, and I don't go out, I literally go to the supermarket and that's it. I tend to not bring a bag, um, but then a coin purse is too small, my pockets, I don't like everything everywhere, so what I've been doing is having everything in there, my phone, um, everything I need, all of my cards in case I need something, and I just put that in my pocket. So I've actually been using this so much, I think it's a really um, beautiful piece to add to my Hermes collection, and I just love the feel of it, I love using it, you honestly can feel the craftsmanship, and I'm not just talking gibberish, like you generally can feel the craftsmanship, they're all handmade, and yeah, basically loved this for 2020, if anybody, I love the, the new one with the strap, um, is it called the Kelly Carter? No, no, that's the clutch bag. Um, I just got out of my mind, but I'll write it here. I love that one as well. I definitely would have one of these, but I just love the traditional purse. Um, and I actually got this from Luxury Promise during the first week of lockdown when you couldn't buy anything anywhere. They had the black with the palladium and they actually got one in this week and you can use Claire 30 to get a discount. Um, even without the discount, if you're from outside Europe or England, it's already cheaper for you and then use that discount as well and they actually have a few colours they have the Hermes constant one as well um, yeah really really love it and it looks so beautiful it looks it fits perfect with my K28 and it even fits in the 25 um, I'm not going to talk about any Hermes because obviously all my Hermes that I bought I loved so let's get into everything else this was my favourite leather jacket that I got in 2020. Um, I have the Saint Laurent one, which I'll link below. Saint Laurent to me is my favorite brand for leather jackets and I love Saint Laurent ready to wear. Of course, if you have the budget for Saint Laurent, the leather is slightly nicer, the fit is slightly better um, and I do love it, but this is such an incredible, it's like basically the same. It's a bit more oversized, it's more boxy and Saint Laurent is more fitted, which is quite a big thing to be honest. And um, there's a lot more detail here. Uh, but this is the best leather blazer that I've ever come across. I've got a size 38, so I've got one size bigger. Um, and it's fantastic. Real leather, they do the most amazing leather flares. I didn't get them because this is the only size sold out. Um, but the quality of this, the fit of this, real pockets, I have worn it so much. I wear it with like a tracksuit. I wear, I wear it with everything. I can't wait to wear it out, out. It looks so great with everything. Um, and it's still in stock. So if you're looking for a leather blazer, this one is definitely the one. I recommend it and the price is so, so good because it's from a high street. And when I actually saw the price um, and everything, I actually thought it was faux leather, um, but it's not, it's real leather, amazing leather, and I can't praise it enough. And I bought that full price and so happy with it. Um, and remember this one for when I talk about some bad purchases. Another purchase in 2020 was my Blaze, Paris said I'm saying Blaze wrong, so apparently it's Blazo. Blaze Milano jacket. I got my first one in 2018 and I wore it the day before New Year's Eve in Dubai, I put up a picture here. I love this brand, made in Italy, um, is pricey, but they are well made. All the fabric is amazing, all the fastening, uh, everything about these jackets are amazing. They have like little pockets inside. The, bu the buttons are beautiful. It is one of my favorite, if not my most favorite blazer brand. And I literally just ordered a new one. I've been waiting for a really nice color. I'll leave the link below to the one that I ordered. They do normally sell out quite fast. I wear a size two. Um, I actually went up a size in this one because it's like a tweed fabric and I actually loved the bigger size. So I like to size up in things, but they are true to size. Size two is a size UK 10. Um, but I just love this tone of this. 
Uh, they've got a couple in the sale, like the detail of this, these blazers are amazing. And if you haven't checked out Blaze Milano, you definitely should. I'll leave some links below. I'm so glad I took the plunge to get that one last year. Um, and uh, yeah, it's all different, like they do all different sizes, styles and they're doing so much more in their collection. But yeah, it's an amazing brand and I'm one of my favourite things. Now this is a funny one. So this isn't for everyone because it's monogram. Um, and monogram, I us have a quick talk about monogram. So I've never loved it, but I've never hated it. So, and it was a huge trend at the beginning of last year and the year before. Um, and it's totally gone now as a trend. And I've only just got this. Trends don't bother me. I'm well aware that monogram is not in. You can wear it reversible. So I actually wear it like this all the time. And you, can, you can't you can see, really, because that is covered like this. That bit there you can't see because that's basically what you can see. The only monogram you can see is that. Uh, but I just love it for the grey colour. And then if I ever did want to wear it that way, I can. Um... Oh, it literally is like a duvet so I have never owned a puffer coat and I don't know I've never judged anyone who wore a puffer coat I just it just never was on my radar to get one for myself and with all of like the lockdown and everything and the only thing I was looking forward to was going for my walks and I have some beautiful coats some really warm coats and I had more than enough to choose from but when it was raining normally I wouldn't go out that's the thing but I didn't care if it was raining, I actually enjoyed going out in the rain, um, but I didn't have a suitable coat, I'd always come back soaking wet, so I was like, I'm going to get a puffer coat, and I wanted one that was really warm, um, I had a voucher and paid the extra, um, I was sick of umbrellas, because I always forget them, I always break them, I can't bother to hold them, whereas with a hood, it works so much better, you haven't got to carry anything, you haven't got to forget anything, and I fell in love with this one. They do them in black and all different colours. I, I really recommend them. It is so warm. It has this that goes round. And I basically met my friend for a drink one time, literally in 18 months before lockdown. And we both turned up with a puff coat. We're, we're old, old best friends. And we laughed. We were like, we've reached that age where we love a puff coat. Not saying it's not trendy or anything, but we just laughed. And then a week later, I went for a walk with my friend in the park. And she had a puff coat on. So for me, 2020 is just the year of discovering puff coats. And the practicality of them, the warmth of them. If you're sitting there and you're like, yeah, Claire, everyone owns a puff coat. Then, yeah, I'm late to the party. But I'm like this huge puff coat fan now. So another one of my best purchases from 2020 are my Fendi riding boots. They're just so comfortable. There is that welly riding boot trend at the moment. Um, but these are still quite classic. So I think they're good investment, investment, good cost per wear. I love the logo, but it's quite discreet. And they're just so comfortable and go with absolutely everything. So And they're all in stock. Uh, sorry, it's in stock in all sizes. So I'll link those ones below. Um... Let's talk about a hair thing. My hair feels so soft at the moment. So this, this serum is the best serum in the world. So my sister-in-law, who's not into beauty or anything like that, she bought me one about five years ago, probably even longer. And she said, oh, Claire, my hairdresser uses it. It's amazing. I had to buy it. So I thought it must be good for her to go and spend this kind of money because she's not into that. Um, it is amazing. Um, and then I rediscovered it because I normally just get my same random one. But because of COVID again, I was buying things online. I was being a bit more patient than normal, looking at other things. And I thought, oh, I haven't had this for ages. Um, and then I bought it again and it was like rediscovered again in 2020. But trust me, this is the best serum in the world. I don't know what, what, I don't know what is in there, but it's just absolutely amazing. It's so nourishing because sometimes with serum, it does the job, a lovely job of doing the blow dry, but this is actually nourishing. It's like a leave-in conditioner or something. Um, and then actually for 2021, I'm actually working with this brand. I can't believe it because Shurimura was the first uh, beauty thing that um, it basically for my first Christmas bought me a load of beauty stuff and I had the Givenchy ball mascara a Shurimura box with loads of Shurimura and it was the Karl Lagerfeld collection. Does anyone remember that? So um, it just made me rediscover it and the fact that I'm working with them now, I cannot believe it. This is not part of an ad and I actually bought this last year. Uh, this is just a new one. 
Uh, but yeah, amazing, amazing serum. And I actually, because I did work with them previously this year, I've actually got a discount code for this. And the shampoo I'm using, um, so, so good. I, because I couldn't go to the hair salon in, uh, you know, the whole of last year, I was going back to using purple shampoos and... I like purple shampoos, it's a must for blonde hair, but they can dry your hair out, whereas the Shurimura one is so, so good, um, and it's something that I picked up again in 2020. So I'll leave the link to that and the discount code, but you can see how amazing my hair is lately. Um, what else do we have that I loved? Um, I think I want to talk about my Hermes. Um, I bought all these in 2020, so this one was gifted to me, but I bought one in this colour, and I'd always wanted an Hermes blanket, and something that I do all the time, when things are classic, I'm like, oh, I'll get it, I'll get it later, I'll get that sold out thing that's more exciting, and in 2020, I learned, no, stop doing that, Claire, and get that classic piece that you always want, and stop being attracted by the thing that is, like, the exciting piece. So I finally bought, um, we bought one of these in beige. I loved it so much. They're actually uh, amazing quality. They're so soft. And I just love how they make a room, make a sofa, make a bed. So I literally just started getting loads in 2020 and I love them. I'd even get another one. Um, these I got in 2020. I got two of these. And I also got in 2020 a black one. And I really love them. I think they're amazing. This one is from Luxury Promise. Again, you can use the discount code and they've got a couple in stock at the moment. Another one of my favourite home uh, purchases of 2020, which I cannot, I cannot not include this. It's my shaggy Sheerlin sofa from Timothy Alton. Um, so this is not in the right place at the moment. It's probably going to live in the lounge when we redecorate it, possibly the extension, but it is the most beautiful Oh, it's like my one of my pride and joys. Everything I buy from Timothy Alton, I adore. I love it so much. To be honest, all of my Timothy Alton pieces that I bought last year has definitely got to be in there. Everything that I got from Timothy Alton, um, it's really worth the money. It not only brings me so much joy, but it's part of our home that we actually use. And Paris adores Timothy Alton. It's like the brand. He's not bothered about brands or shopping or anything. Doesn't care what I have about the, around the home. But Timothy Alton is like one. This is an amazing book, by the way. It's called Signs about signs. Um, like you know, like when a feather comes in front of you and stuff like that. But anyway, um, it's like we really enjoy it together. And the craftsmanship is like art our Timothy Alton Rex table. We love it, we can't wait to have it in the extension. Um, but that Shaggy, for me, is everything. And they're actually still doing the 50% off. I think it literally ends this week. And we bought so much with that discount. It was like open to everyone and I think it's still on. And if you do mention me, you get a gift with purchase and it's a nice gift. Um, and these Hermes cushions look so nice on it. I sit there all the time. It's so big. Um, I love it so much. I even might think about getting another one. And it's actually the same sheen as this. Let me get out of the way of this um, chair. This uh, cabana chair. And I love them. Love them, love them, love them. If I'm honest, probably the best thing that I bought in in 2020 all of my Timothy Alton stuff it's it's like I have like my top five brands and I would say it's probably on a I don't know I love it I was going to say on a par with Hermes but possibly I love it even more my camera's gone wonky now so I think that's I mean there were so many things that I got in um in, in a 2020 that I loved but I think that's more than enough now let's talk about the things that I regretted so very similar to the jacket. I actually got this one before and it's faux leather, which we need to talk about. Um, this is by a brand Material and I love this brand. I'm not pulling this brand down, I love it. I've actually got another a jacket like this that I'm gonna show you. The pink tone that they've picked and sourced is perfection. It's like a warm pinky tone. It's a beautiful suit. And I, I, I was aware that it was faux leather and I was like, oh, but I love the colour and the shape so much, I'm just going to get it. And it, it's annoying to wear it because I do wear leather. Material is a great brand if you don't want to wear leather because it's actually fat, like amazing stuff. Um, and there's only so much you can't wear. It narrows the market when you don't wear leather. And then it narrows the market even more when 
uh, it comes to the type of faux leather. So I really recommend Material as a brand. I love their designs and everything. I just, I love it so much. I, I wish it was real leather. Um, so I do regret buying this because I did buy it. And it it is good for faux leather, but I don't know. For me, like they easily rip faux leather. It feels a bit, the fit is not amazing anyway. And I loved this shape so much, like the thought of a, a, a leather blazer. The quality just wasn't there and I, it was just a waste of money. And I bought that one shortly afterwards and there was just no comparison. I know that that's gonna be still amazing in 40 years and it's going to wear really nicely, whereas this is going to fall apart. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about is this whole vegan leather thing. So a lot of people ask me, Claire, what does vegan leather mean? And I say to them, it's just the new trendy version of faux leather. Um, for me, I get annoyed when I see brands say vegan leather because it's like market marketing trickery. Vegan leather is only vegan if it's made from a plant like cactus or pineapple, you can even make it from now. This to me is vegan and this is amazing. For me, it should be called faux leather when it's made from plastic because it gives the illusion that it's sustainable and it's not so if you have a go at someone for wearing leather i understand your argument but then there's another argument like wearing plastic clothes you know so it, that does annoy me nothing against material for that but the fact that just when you see vegan leather actually look at what it's made from is it made from a plant or is it actually plastic so that whole thing so yeah i do regret buying that which leads me on to this because it's about basically everything I regret is the quality so I am very particular about my fabrics and it is because I do have um, sensitive skin and eczema and all of this la 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 sometimes if I love something like this this amazing hoodie sometimes I know it's polyester but I'm like it will be fine let's order it and buy it and hope that it's like a soft polyester I am not doing this no more so I, I regret buying this because it was like £50. That is a waste of £50. That is a waste of, you know, bad for the environment that I'm buying something that I don't even want. And I hold my hands up that I did it with this because I, I knew that it wasn't going to work out. Um, and yeah, I end up giving it away every time. But that's still like a waste and I shouldn't do it. And, I, and this was the, I hadn't done it for so long. And I loved this jumper so much. It looked so good on the model. But it's itchy. It makes me, and I don't sweat, it makes me sweat, it makes me feel on edge and anxious because I'm all sweat and can't breathe. Um, and it just feels horrible. Like, this is meant to be a nice, cosy, this is from Zara. I love Zara, but um, it's meant to be a cosy, lovely jumper. Paris won't touch me or cuddle me with something like this because he's like, ugh. So he's actually worse than me. Uh, but I'm not doing it no more. And for me, I'm regret anything that I bought that's polyester, that it's just a waste of money, and I'm not doing it no more. And I was gonna to talk to you about the whole like process, but I think it's gonna be boring. I was gonna to talk to you about how, um, when you see a jumper that you like, it's, and I get some of you don't mind polyester. I did a poll on Instagram, it was very interesting. So yeah, it is a personal preference, but for me, I would rather pay the extra money. I'd rather, not necessarily cashmere, but I'd rather have paid the extra money to have this that's going to wash well. I wear it at home and I'm all cozy. Like this one that I have on is High Street as well. It was 75, no, it was 125 pounds. That one was like 50 pounds. So the price difference is quite reasonable that this was 175 because it's not polyester. I feel really cosy in this. I'm not sweating in this. Um, for me, the money is much, it's worth it. So that. Um, so one of my worst purchases of 2020 are these shoes. Not these exactly, but I'm going to tell you the story. So I pre-ordered them. Um, they're the Mac Mac shoes. I love them. They're so beautiful. If you've got these shoes, then they're great. Um, I think they're just so pretty. But for me, they were too expensive for how uncomfortable they are. I'm not prepared to pay nearly a thousand pounds for a pair of shoes that I know I'm not going to wear because they're too uncomfortable. So I did send them back and I didn't even show you them because I didn't want you to buy them and then it turns out that I knew I was sending them back all along. 
Um, so then I discovered these dupe ones and for £70 I actually would pay more and I don't know how they've managed to be more comfortable than the actual real thing and the heel height is half the heel height which just makes them so comfortable. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about, you're going to be shocked but hear me out when I talk about it because I don't hate this thing. Hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. So I love this bag so much. I love it and the reason why I think it's one of the items in my bags that I regret uh, my items that I regret buying I think I'm gonna blame Covid on this one because when I bought this I thought that Covid was gonna end soon like we've all been like it's gonna end soon it's gonna end soon and it's not and I thought that we were gonna manage to go on a holiday and this was like a nice summer bag and it's a beautiful summer bag um, I have worn it in the winter I've worn it with like a beige um, it looks so great with beige. Um, I'm actually going to do a cutaway of me, like how I'm going to wear it. Um, but it is something that I would love, like Caribbean holiday, Amalfi Coast, South of France. Like this is such a holiday bag and I think I kind of resent it because I couldn't go on holiday and I never got to enjoy it last year. So I spent so much money on a bag that I haven't been able to wear properly and it's true purpose. So I think it's not the bag, I think it's that. With that said, this is the first Chanel bag that I bought since that huge price increase. And it always goes up in price, but it was a big jump. And as I bought it, I even said in the video, oh, this bag is 4,300 and the other one is 4,500. And then there's a title come up that it's like 5,700. 5, and I got to the till and I didn't realize. Um, and it was fine, like, they're not pre they don't pressurise me there, and I could have said no, definitely could have said no, but I was like, oh, oh, and I was picturing me all, like, on holiday wearing this bag, and it's a Chanel bag, they always increase in value, so I went with it, but f my love for Hermes, and the money I could have spent going to Hermes, and because I do have, not to be smug, but I do have the option to buy new Hermes bags, so just being honest with my thought process with this, would I prefer... A Kelly bag than this yes I would prefer a lemon Kelly bag any day over this so that's why I regret buying it Paris never questions stuff that I buy because I'm respectful and we talk about everything um, and I never live a uh, shop beyond my means but even he was like it's not the money it's it's the way you allocated the money to like why did you buy that and I, I, I looked at him and I said you're right and I could have taken it back I hadn't even taken it out of the box but I still like it and I'm still going to enjoy this bag when it's the summer. So next summer, hopefully, no this summer, I can't wait to be just walking around the city in a pair of stonewashed jeans, like some tan sandals, a white t-shirt, like my new necklace, going on holiday. I'm going to love it and it's always a bag that's going to hold its value. Look, it looks so great with grey as well. So um, I'm hopeful about this bag and I think that COVID made me hate it um, and I'm not so sure I would buy another classic flap. If I was going to buy another classic flap it would probably be vintage um, because of the quality and just the price difference. Another bag that I actually really love in, from 2020 was this just because it had been on my wish list for so long and uh, they, do, they did it in beige as well and I'm trying to hunt down a beige one. Um, and I use this so much, it's like the perfect size and because of the price that this one was like compared to this and that I'm using this all the time, yeah, it makes me like, mm. but let, let's be hopeful, let, let's uh, see how it is this summer and if I use it, I doubt I'd ever sell it and I remember saying to the SA like, oh, they're probably never going to do lemon again and it is a beautiful lemon, like it's not yellow, it's lemon. And it is really, really beautiful. So, yeah, I'm very surprised that I've included a Chanel bag in my, like, things that I didn't want to buy. But, um, there you go. So, let me know if you liked this video. Let me know if you'd like me to do it again. Let me know if you'd like me to do, like, a beauty one. I, th I love beauty, and I think people don't realise how much beauty stuff I spend my money on and everything. But I've never really touched upon it that much. Like, I mentioned the hair thing. Maybe you want to know more. But, um, they're my best and worst. Uh, please leave recommendations or suggestions if you want me to um, film anything similar for up and coming, like any styling videos, whether I literally filmed one today which was a recommendation. That video will probably be 
be up next after this. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I would love it if you would subscribe. Do follow me on Instagram if you don't already. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Oh, 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 no, wait, wait, wait. This was on my lap and it fell off. So this I bought in 2020. It's a little bit of luxury. I'll leave the link below because I've actually got a couple more in stock. And it was one of my favourite things. So I've got a little gold Chanel vintage one. I bought it about four years ago. And I love it. Like, if you find a good Chanel clip, um, they're just amazing little bit of luxury. Like, imagine wearing all black or, you know, jeans and a t-shirt or a frilly dress. And, you know, you put that at the back of your hair. They're such nice little, um, like I call them little luxuries because it's a luxury, it's expensive, but it's entry price point and they look beautiful on, they make an outfit, you can get your cost per wear out of them, wear them all the time. I'll link some below, you can actually use my discount on this as well. Um, and I've also got another one, but they're at my flat, a beautiful like 90 supermodel Bauman ones. Um, so I'll link them below as well. Uh, there's two different styles and one is a lot cheaper than the other. So definitely check out those. Love a hair clip. Um, so yeah. I mean, I could go on forever because I love everything I buy. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I leave this, uh, I leave this jumper in the description box as well because it's high street and it's amazing. Okay, three, two, one, go. Hi, welcome to the Paris show. So Paris would like, I can't, you can't see me because I'm... Uh, Undressed. Yes. <laughs> so um, Paris decided to tell me what his investment pieces are and I said stop right there, you should tell everybody. Well, I only had um, the good ones or the bad ones? Both, you should share both. You completely threw me off now. <laughs> You're like doing signs. Did, why do I don't speak sign language? Sorry. What's that mean? <laughs> I have something in my teeth, is that what you're saying? <laughs> Don't worry. You're pointing at my teeth. No, so anyway, we were talking about other things that we've bought that have been a bad investment and I thought we should just tell you everything. Okay, go. The bad investment. S start off with that one that we joked about when we said this is the worst investment we've ever had. We've ever, we've no, ever I'm holding this. I want to just show this. Alright, right, then go there, show them that. It's a door stopper on Amazon. And the thing is like, it's like jello. So it stops no door. You cannot put a... It cannot stop any door, it's so jellified and it's so thin. It's like thin. for a you, it, a house. It goes under any door unless you've got your door right up to the ground. It's uh, pretty awful, I bought them for all the house and now we're all struggling with all the doors. They look awful and they don't even work, so that's a terrible buy. Terrible buy. If you have a friend you don't like, you can buy it for him. Uh, yeah, the other one with the baby doctor, that was that was mm -hmm. hilarious. He walked in, literally I, I looked up at him, he was about 10 he seconds. Said, Hi. He, gra he said hi, grabbed Donnie, looked at his feet, his hands very quickly. I'm sure they can see more than I can see and they're used to other issues. And literally walked out and I'm like, surely he's coming back. It lasted five seconds, not even, he didn't even turn the baby around. So I thought nothing of it. Can't then be I, like 15 minutes though. Then we got the bill of 250 pounds for that baby doctor. I was like, was that the baby doctor? And then uh, on his report, we were asking, we were wondering what are his birthmark. He's got a massive birthmark on his forehead and a massive one on his neck. It's like the baby with the most birthmarks I've ever seen. It says birthmark report, no birthmarks. All right, okay. Uh, hands, ten fingers. Le uh, feet was it? Feet, ten uh, toes. Is that what you call them in English? Yeah. And that was it. But then the, the nurse was saying, oh, you need to get him back. He's meant to check other things that are not even on the report. Okay, so... So uh, it, was, things, it was a one-off for them. Good things of 2020. I know, the door stopper I bought. The you ones you will insert. Stopper. Yeah, but they're to stop you'll, slamming. You'll buy a door stopper and put it in the door. No, you know what I'm talking about. Well, we'll insert a picture here of what it looks like. It's a No, stopper. I'm not inserting pictures because I made it in the video. You I are, because it's a door stopper. It's like a spongy thing and it stops slamming doors and it wakes up the baby. Ah, uh, well, nah, yeah. that's not a door stopper. It is, it. and if you've got a child, it stops them from banging their fingers. That's an, Yeah, yeah, that's yeah it's amazing. a door block, spongy yeah. thing, so the door can't slam on anyone's and finger. And what's your other? It's also because our doors close on their own, so it's very annoying. What's your other 2020 Best Buy? Best Buy was the beer machine. Well, you bought it for me for my yeah. birthday. That was good. But Come then to them, not me. I took about 20 kilos with that machine. 
Um, and then, oh yeah, the panini maker, not panini, but toasty machine, but the one where they're like a flat grill, flat grill, and then you squash yeah, things inside. Yeah, I bought it for inside. him, and he was like the impressed. Cuban, Cuban sandwiches thing. He was like, oh, yeah. That was so good. I think I just about got a thank you. That's my whole kitchen in one thing. And then, uh, then six months later, he tells me he loves it. Okay, that's it then. Yeah, bye. Bye.